In this lecture, we are going to study the following five topics. Firstly, we are going to introduce you to the C language. We are going to look at the history of this language. Then we are going to look at the mathematical concept of constants and variables and relate that to the C language. Then we'll come data types, identifiers and keywords. These are programming centric words which we'll study. Now let us kick off with learning the C language. So the first and the foremost thing is the question that arises is that what is C? What is C? So the answers are very simple that C is a programming language. Programming language. Right? And it was developed at Bell Labs. developed at Bell Labs. Bell Labs is a lab in America famous for its Unix operating system and the C language main purpose was to build the Unix operating system. So it was developed at Bell Labs in America and the author of this language was Dennis Ritchie. Dennis Ritchie. Dennis Ritchie along with a man known as Brian Kernighan developed this C language and it was in the year 1972. C was developed in 1972. Let us look at the history of this language. So the history of this language says that history of this language says that before C there were several languages. So the most important language which from which C was derived was in 1967 a language known as BCPL Basic Combined Programming Language emerged. Its author was Martin Richards. And based on the basic combined programming language, the BCPL, a language known as B was evolved. And it was in year 1970. The author of this B language was Ken Thompson. B was also evolved at the Bell Labs in USA. So, the, so Ken Thompson was B's author. After B, after B developed C. So C was directly derived from B after making some advancements in technologies and some inventions C was derived in 1972 C and the author was Dennis Ritchie. But what happened after this was really amazing. C was so much popular that there were there were so much adaptations of this language that many people had their own C compilers. They had their own versions of the language. So this made incompatibility be between each other because there were a lot of companies who adopted C like Microsoft adopted C and made their own version of the Visual C++ plus C compiler. There was another compiler known as Turbo C. So they had their own specifications of the language. Now because of this there were there was incompatibility. So C had to be standardized. It had to be implemented according to some standard. So the standardization process was done in 1990. A long way 1990 by the ANSI. ANSI and ISO committee. So a committee was drafted to standardize the C language. And the language, the C language in the 1990s developed by the ANSI or ISO community 
was known as ANSI or ISOC. Now, C, as C language was standardized by ANSI and ISO, so you must know what ANSI and ISO stands for. ANSI stands for, let me write it, ANSI stands for American National Standards Institute. So this is an institute that standardizes things in America and its international counterpart is ISO, the International Standards Organization. the International Standards Organization. They just create standards. They standardize things so that there is no incompatibility between each other. So that you get to choose only one language, not variants of that language. Let us know some more facts about C. So, let us know some more about C. More about C. So C is a structured language. Structured means that the language is broken down into blocks. It has a proper structure. We will come to this later, but for now remember that C is a structured language. Another fact about C is that it is mid-level. We studied the different types of programming languages in previous lectures. So C is a mid-level language. Why mid-level? I'll explain. Before that, let me write the third fact about C is that it is machine independent. So first, let us know why C is a mid-level language. C is a mid-level language because it is between high-level and low-level. So it has features of low-level language as well as features of high-level language too. So it, is, it works between high-level and low-level features. Between high and low-level. Another point that C is mid-level is because it works very close to the hardware. Very close to hardware. C has operators which let you work with the hardware, which let you manipulate the bits and bytes that determine the functioning of a hardware. And the third point is that it is as good as a high level language. As good as high, high level. So that is why it is a mid level language. It comes between the low and the high level language. C is machine independent because it works on different processor architectures too. Be it Intel, be it AMD, C works well. It also works on different operating system. So this makes it platform independent too. It works on Linux, it works on Windows, it also works on Mac. This stuff, this, this feature is obtained because C is a compiled language. So it is, it is because of a compiler. So a compiler can translate the same program for different processors. It can translate the same program according to different operating systems. So C is platform independent as well as machine independent. Now let us know about the features of the C language. So it has got a lot of features. Let me write all the features here. Features. The first feature is that C is a robust language. C 
is a robust language, bring any program of any complexity. C can solve it. You can solve it using the C programming language. It is robust. It can handle everything. The second feature is that it is very efficient and fast. Efficient and fast. Why fast? Because it works very close to the hardware. It is as good as a low-level language. And why efficient? Because it solves almost all problems. It solves problems like a high-level language. So that is why it is efficient as well as fast. The third point is, it is very easy to learn. Easy to learn. Why? Because it has got only 32 keywords. You don't have to learn each and every keyword. And you can always learn 32 keywords, right? So it is very easy to learn. What is a keyword? We'll learn about it later. But it has only 32 keywords. And why? The most important point is that it is easy to learn because it is a high level language too. And it is English like. So it's easy to learn. The fourth point is that it is highly portable. We learned that C was machine independent language. That is why it is a highly portable language too. If you write a program for Windows for Windows operating system and you want that it should run on the Linux operating system too. So you can port your application from Windows to Linux. You just have to change a little code and then you are ready to run on Linux. That is why it is highly portable. The fifth point is it is well suited for structured programming. Well suited for structured programming. Structured programming means you structure your problem well and then solve it according to a programming language. So it is well suited for structured programming language. As C language is structured, you can break your program in structures and then solve it. So C is well suited for such type of problems. The final feature is that it is extensible. One of the features which makes C highly popular in the software world. It is extensible. If there is anything among your problems that C cannot offer, you can write your own extension to the language. You can write your own libraries and extend the functionality of this language according to your needs. So it's extensible. So these are the features of the C language. Now comes the point where we can start learning the C language. Now before we learn the C language, we know that C language is an English-like language. It's a high-level language. So why not take the example of English? So we have the English language. English. In English, what do we have? We have characters. Characters. We have sentences. We have words. We have sentences. And we have paragraphs. Right. Characters form words. Several words form together sentences. And several sentences when clubbed together form paragraphs. Quite similar is the case with C. In the C language, it is very similar. We have characters. And characters form keywords. Instead of words, we have keywords. We have keywords. Characters form keywords, constants and variables. These keywords, constants and variables when combined together form statements similar to what we have in English. Statements 
or instructions. And statements and instructions when clubbed together form nothing but programs. So this way the C language works. We have characters, characters make keywords, keywords make statements and statements make programs. So when we learn the English language, we first learn the alphabet, the characters which are supported by the English language. Now we would follow a similar approach with the C language here. So we first learn the characters. What characters are available in C? The character set, the character set, the character set of C is as follows. We have letters. We have letters from the alphabets A to Z, capital A to Z and small a to Z. Apart from letters, we also have digits. Digits from 0 to 9. After digits, we have special characters. Special characters like the examples are dollar, exclamation, at the rate, asterisk, and a lot of them. Also, there are some characters which you cannot see. Such characters are called as white spaces. White spaces are the characters which are not visible which do not usually make sense like the tab character or the space character. So these form the character set of the C language. Now let us learn what are constants and variables. First we'll look at it from the mathematical point of view then we'll look at it from the C programming point of view. So we have constants and variables. Let us take this simple equation. Let me put it in another color. 1x plus 2y plus 3z equals to 25. So you can easily point out that the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 25 are nothing but constants. They are constants. Right? 1, 2, 3 and 25. According to a mathematical point of view. Because 1 is always 1 anywhere in the world. Be it India, Pakistan or any country. 1 is 1. It does not change. That is why it is a constant. And x, y and z are nothing but variables. Mathematics says that anything whose value changes, whose value can change is called a variable. And the same concept applies with C. The same mathematical concept applies with C. So in C, constants are divided, are categorized into two types. So constants, constants are numeric or constants can be character constants. Numeric, like you can have real numbers, real numbers or integers real numbers like 3.14 integers like 9 and character is further divided into a single character single character or multi character multi character is also called a string single characters like a single a 
or single B and multi characters like a whole string A B C. So constants are classified as numeric or character. Numeric is further divided into real that is decimal numbers or integers that is whole numbers and the character type of constants are classified into single and multi character constants. Let us now look at each one of these constants starting with the integer. The examples of integers are 15, 25 is an integer, 1 is an integer, minus 10 is an integer, 0 is an integer and so on. If you look at it carefully, these are whole numbers. Integers represent nothing but whole numbers. An integer in C language can be positive or negative. And as computers have limited memory, they don't have unlimited memory, so there is a range for an integer. In mathematics, the range is unlimited, minus infinity to plus infinity. But in computer science, we do have limits. So integers have range. The range is, the range varies from minus 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 to plus 3, 2, 7, 6, 7. So you can represent only integers ranging from this to this. So it has a specific range. And in computer science, we do follow rules. So there are rules to be followed while defining an integer. So the rules are the rules are such that any integer must contain at least one digit. So it must contain at least one digit. So how can it be an integer if it does not contain any digit? It should not contain any alphabet. The second rule is that it must not contain any decimal point. No decimal point is allowed. If, the, if it's a decimal point, then it is not an integer, it's a fraction. The third rule is such that no spaces or commas are allowed in between. No spaces or commas. Now let us take some examples and try to determine if these are integers or not. If I say, if I say plus 55, you can precede an integer with a plus. So this example is correct. You can precede an integer with plus. If I say 26.0, this would be wrong because there is a decimal point. Decimal point is not allowed. If I say 2, 5, 6. There are huge gaps in between. So this would also be wrong because no spaces. These are spaces. These are spaces are not allowed. If I say 15,300, this would also be wrong because here is a comma. So this is not allowed. Minus 25 is always allowed. You can precede a sign before an integer. If it's a minus, you have to precede. If it's a plus, it's optional. You may or may not precede it with a sign. Now let's move on to another type of constant, which is a real constant. Real. Real numbers, you know, in maths, real constant. So let us look at some examples of real. Real can be 3.14, 6.18, minus 0 0.4 and so on. Real numbers mean, means numbers with decimal points. In C we also call this as floating point. Floating point numbers. Okay. Like decimals, they can be positive 
or negative reals can be positive or negative just like integers and they do have a range range to be followed which is which varies from minus 3.4 into 10 raised to power 38 to plus 3.4 into 10 raised to power 38 so that's a huge range for to represent real numbers in C language reals also have rules to be followed if you want to implement it if you want to define a real number you have rules to be followed the first rule is that it should contain at least one decimal point and at least one digit at least one decimal point okay at least one digit and a decimal point no two decimal points are allowed then it would not be a real number only one decimal point and at least one digit the second rule is such that no comma or space is allowed same as the integer or space let us try to determine which of these following numbers is a real number or not if I say 215 215 point so this is correct because it contains a decimal point and at least one digit it contains three digits so it's okay if I say plus 0.5 if I do not precede or succeed the decimal point with a number it's okay but there should be at least one number a sign before it is okay it's correct if I say 1 comma 0 0 0 dot 5 so this is wrong because commas are not allowed if I say 0 0.5 correct there is another type of representing real numbers it's like this if I say 1 e minus 10 it goes like this the e is exponent e is called an exponent so to represent it normally we would do like this 1 into e is 10 so 10 raised to power minus 10 anything that succeed e goes to the powers of 10 goes to the exponent of 10 so this is important if I say 12 e 8 we can also represent this as 12 into e is replaced by 10 and anything that succeeds e goes in the power of 10 so 10 raised to power 8 this is how real numbers are represented okay now after the real constant comes the character constant we have the character constant characters let us take some examples of characters we have Z we have the dollar sign we have anything the percent sign and on and on characters do have rules rules are as follows any character in C must contain only one character must contain only one character remember that I have put an emphasis on only one that it should not contain more than one character previously it was that in, in integers or real it was at least now it's only a character is always a single character in C we always say that and when we refer to character it's single character okay the second rule says that it should be enclosed within single quotes enclosed within single quotes 
single quotes are like this everything x y z okay now comes the point that how do we represent characters in in C in previous lectures we studied that characters are represented characters or alphabets are represented as codes the C language follows that and characters are represented using codes so characters using ASCII codes we learned it in previous lectures again I'll explain what is ASCII codes ASCII stands for American standard code for information interchange for information interchange it's a code general code each and every character is given a code so the range as I said computers have limited memory so the range of ASCII is from 0 to 255 so you can only represent 256 characters using ASCII as the range is only from 0 to 255 now let us take examples and try to determine if it's a character or not. If I say just 9, people would say that it is a character, it is a number in fact, but I would say it is wrong because 9 is not enclosed within single quotes. I said that it should be enclosed in single quotes. So it is indeed a number, it is not character. When I say 9 in single quotes, it's correct. It is now a character. What if I say Nagpur in single quotes? This is wrong. Rule number 1 must contain only one character. So this contains more than one character. So that's wrong. If I say 9 like this, this is also wrong. It would appear correct, but if you look at it carefully, this single quote is wrong. It should be of this type. Only the 9 type, the right one, single quote is allowed, not other. Okay, now let's move on to variables and try to answer a question and derive something from that. Let us revisit our previous equation 1x plus 2y plus 3z equals to 25. In this equation 1, 2, 3 and 25 are constants and x, y and z are variables right we know that but a question that arises is let me write this question what do x y z contain on answering this question we will come to know a very simple concept we'll come to know what x and y and z will contain so if you try to put some values of x, y and z in the equation if you try to put the value of x as 0 y as 5 and z as 5 in the equation it will satisfy this equation or at some another point of time if you put 5 in x 10 in y and 0 in z you can also satisfy the equation the point I'm trying to make is that 0, 5, 5 or 5, 10 or 0 are nothing but constants, right? Because these numbers are constants, so these, these are also constants. So what do we get after answering this question? 
we get that variables store constant values right variables store constant values because at some point of time we have one constant in a variable at some another point of time we have another constant in a variable so ultimately the values which get stored in variables is a constants and why are variables called variables it is because the value of the constant in a variable can always change as I said at one point of time you can have one value at another point of time you can have another value that is why they are they are called variables now let us try to relate this some some way in C so in C let us consider that you have three containers and the names of these containers are A, B and C. What you try to do is you put constant values in these containers. So in A you put a constant 25, in B you put a constant at the rate, in C you put a constant 3.14. So in C's terminology these boxes that I've drawn are nothing but memory spaces. This box is a memory space, this is memory space, this is memory space. These are memory spaces. And the names given to these boxes, the name A, B and C are nothing but variable names. If you are not understanding, no problem. Just remember that boxes, these containers are memory spaces and the names of these containers are nothing but variable names. And you are storing constants in these containers. So ultimately variables are containers. You store constant values in variables. You store values in variables in those containers. So ultimately what you are getting is that a variable is nothing but a name given to a memory space. And what do we do with a variable? A variable is a name given to a memory space where we can store values, right? We store values in variables, we store values in memory. A variable is nothing, just a memory space and it has a name so that you can access it where we can store values. Okay, this is the concept of variables in C. So do variables have types? Variables do have types. So types of variables. Now things have been starting to make sense to you. What would be the type of variables? Remember that variables store nothing but constants and constants have types. So what will be the va types of variables? it would be the same as constants. Because variables store constants. We have constant 1, we have constant 2. In variables in this variable and in this variable. At one point of time we have constant 1, at another we have another constant. So values can change. So this is all about variables in C. 
Now let us talk something about data types. You know what is data. So a constant is also a data. And data is stored in variables. Right? Data is stored in variables. So data also has types. You would say that the types of data is the same as the type of constant or variables. That is true, but data has to be represented. And data can be represented in many patterns, in many types. So that also determines the data type. Now let us look at the data types here. Data types. Data types are of two categories. One is primary other is secondary. Primary and secondary. The types of constant and variables are called as primary data types which include integers, integers, real numbers, real or floating point numbers and characters. Now there is one more type of primary data type known as void. Void means literally nothing. We'll come to it later. Now remember that the primary data types are integer, float, character and void. The secondary data types are of six types. These will be these we will study later, but for now remember all these six data types. The first one is arrays. Arrays. And an array is nothing but a list of integers, a list of floats, or a list of characters. Now we have, when we have a list of characters, we call them strings. So secondary, a string is a secondary data type. Remember in the constant, in the type of constants, we had a multi-character constant. So that multi-character constant is nothing but a string. We have structures. Structures, similar to structures, we have union, unions and enums. And the final secondary data type that is very important is a pointer. This question is usually asked in the exam. What are the data types? What are the different types of data types? Now we have primary, secondary. Primary are the very basic data types. Integers, reals, characters and void. When we combine these primary or when we morph these primary data types, we get secondary data types, which are arrays, strings, structures, union, enums or pointers. Now the question comes, how do we determine the type of data? So when I say just, when I write just 5 here, this is a constant and you can easily say that this is an integer constant, right? Similarly, the compiler also knows that this is an integer. If I say 3.14, you can, by looking at it, you can say that this is a float float or real. That is the similar case with the compiler also. On the other hand, if I say variable a, how will you know that what does a store? Does it store an integer? Does it store a float? Or does it store a character? So you don't know what type it is. Neither the compiler. So you have to tell the compiler what is the type of a. Because variables, first we have to declare them, first we have to reserve some memory and then we have to store the value. But before storing the value, we have to tell the compiler what value, what is the type of value this variable will store. So to declare the type of value, we just precede that variable's name with the type. So if we want an integer to be stored in A, we will declare a as int A. So that will store an integer. 
if we want a float so we will say float a and if we want a character we will say char a remember that real a will not work we will have to say float why this will not work we will come to it later but we have to say float a same is the case with char character will not work character a will not work this will work this will work okay now let us move on to another topic known as keywords let's take english what do we have in english english has words words which are defined in the dictionary which already have a meaning so that you understand words now the c language has keywords words which are in the dictionary of the c language words which are only understood by the compiler now let's take the previous example uh, declaring the data type of a variable so we, if we have float float a now this will declare that a's type is float you will have a floating constant in the variable a so it will say a's a's type is float and if we as we looked earlier if we say real a if we say real a this is not going to work because the compiler understands float it does not understand a real so this is a keyword and real is not a keyword so it may must be making some sense what is a keyword and what is not a keyword keyword is something which the compiler understands right now there are in all 32 keywords remember this that the c language has 32 keywords now moving on to our next topic which is identifiers now let us put it this way we have memory spaces and we name them and those names are variables variable is a name given to a memory space and a variable identifies memory space so what do this word mean it it is an identifier any variable name is an identifier for the memory space because we identify we locate we access that memory space using this name so anything which identifies something is an identifier with respect to c language now there are rules for naming identifiers because we have to give the user have has to give the names for a variable so we have rules for naming the first rule is that any identifier or a variable name or variable name the rules are such that any identifier or variable name can contain only letters digits or underscore so it can contain letters from capital a to capital z and small a to small z letters digits from 0 to 9 or underscores underscore underscore any identifier must begin with a letter must begin with a letter now if i say 0 a b so this is wrong it should begin with a letter a b 0 this is correct any identifier's length must be less than or equals to 8 this is usually because the modern compilers allow you to have variable names more than 8 characters so in the previous days we used to have 
max length as 8 and that identifier should not be a keyword should not be a keyword this is very important because if you have a variable name which is a keyword for example if you have int and the variables name is float this will confuse the compiler this is wrong but was because it will confuse the compiler it will think what is this float before and after an int so it should not be a keyword all right with this we come to an end of this lecture if you have any queries or any questions to ask you can always contact me on this email address thanks for listening